in this segment we are going to deal something with plastics so plastics are the polymers which can be plastics are the polymers which can be molded into any desired shape by the application of heat and pressure in the presence of catalyst so plastics are the polymers which can be molded into any desired shape by the application of heat and pressure and of course in presence of some catalyst and the plastics can be classified into various categories here we are going to classify them on the basis of two main aspects so the first thing is here we are going to classify them on the basis of two aspects first one is based on thermal behavior it is classified into thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics and the other aspect is based on usage it is classified into two things one is general purpose plastic and the other one is engineering plastics see the polymers are classified on the basis of two aspects one is based on thermal behavior it is classified into thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics and the second aspect based on usage that is general purpose plastic other one is engineering plastic first let us concentrate the plastics which are classified on the basis of thermal behavior first let us see thermoplastics see it is self explanatory the term itself term heat plastic so the plastics which can be softened by heat are called as thermoplastics or the plastics which can be softened by heat and thereby it can be remolded anything which can be softened by heat can be remolded that means the for example this mill cover or any other uh, uh, plastic mill like pvc the used material can be again remolded to get the shared shape that means these polymers are recyclable so thermoplastics are recyclable and they are reversible that means the material which can be made into some desired shape can be again softened and that can be used to make objects again it is reversible so thermoplastics are the plastics which can be softened by heat and thereby they can be remolded they are recyclable they are reversible the best examples are pvc polyvinyl chloride and polystyrene or some of, and nylon or some of the thermoplastics which you are using conventionally and the second one is thermosetting plastic see the term itself thermosetting it is set into a hard mass by the application of the heat and thereby these materials cannot be recycled cannot be softened by heat set into a hard mass on heating and thereby they cannot be recycled the best example we here we can take is bakelite urea formaldehyde resin melamine formaldehyde resin are the some of the best examples of this category so thermo setting plastics, plastics. The, which cannot be softened by heat and during its molding on heating it sets into a hard mass so cannot be recycled that means these plastics are one time use plastics once it is used to make an object that object is permanent it cannot be recycled to get any other object in due course cannot that that's why they cannot be recycled the best examples are bakelite urea formaldehyde resin and melamine formaldehyde resin are some of the best example of this category so now let us differentiate these two thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics so in the previous section we, we have seen about various types of polymerization addition polymerization and condensation polymerization so the thermoplastics are mainly made by addition polymerization whereas these are formed through condensation polymerization and thermoplastics can be as we as in earlier it can be softened by heat cannot be softened by heat and when you are taking this thermoplastic let me say this is the polymer chain 
So between the adjacent polymer chains, we have a weak Van der Waals force of attraction. Whereas in the case of thermosetting plastic, between adjacent chains, we have a definite covalent bond. So between the two polymer chains, we have a definite covalent bond. So this one is our weak Van der Waals force. So the chains are held together by held by weak weak Van der Waals force. There is here chains are held by strong covalent bond. That means when you are heating this, since the Van der Waals forces are very weak, heat can overcome this attractive force and the chain can move from one over the other. That means when you are heating this, this polymers can be softened. Whereas when you come to this thermosetting plastic, between the chains, we have a definite strong covalent bond Unless otherwise the bond is broken, the material cannot be softened. Okay, then we may get a question. So by breaking these bonds, can we soften it? No, once when this bond is broken, all other bonds will be broken. So the material is lost. That means charring taking place. It can never be softened by heat. If at all you are trying to heat it continuously for a longer time, the bond will be broken, charring taking place, material is completely destroyed. And this thermoplastics are soft, flexible, whereas these are hard and brittle. And as I said earlier, this can be remolded, cannot be remolded. Once we make an article, that article shape is permanent, it cannot be remolded to get any other shape. And when you take this thermoplastic soluble in common organic solvents there is here these are insoluble so there are two types of classification of plastics based on the usage one is general purpose plastics so there are two types of classification of plastics based on the usage one is general purpose plastics the other one is engineering plastic as the term goes without saying, it is used for the manufacture of commodity items. So our uh, conventional uh, household items are made out of this. And 80 to 85 percent of the total polymer produced are mainly used for this purpose. The best examples here are polythene, polystyrene, polyvinyl chloride, polypropylene. So we are using the articles made out of these general purpose plastics. So for a polymer to, to be used for this purpose should be crystalline and the most important thing is low Tg. So Tg is nothing but a glass transient temperature that is the Tg is low it can be softened easily and the processing will be convenient. So that's why the material should have low Tg that is called a glass transient temperature and it should be glossy. Or sometimes this polymer, it is not necessary, it should be pakka crystalline, even it may be amorphous. Amorphous means there won't be any pakka crystalline arrangement as we have here. And these polymers, since they are having low Tg, cannot be used for high temperature applications. Because high temperature for uh, making commodity items, we don't require the articles which can withstand very high temperature. So this is sufficient and low abrasion resistant, poor three di poor dimensional stability. That means the article sh dimension will not remain forever when you are heating it to high, high, very high temperature. So that is poor dimensional stability. There is when you come to this engineering plastics, a group of materials obtained from high polymer resins because engineering application. So the polymer or high polymer resins. resins they will have very high molecular weight and since the materials are used for engineering applications, they should have very high mechanical strength and they should have very high dimensional stability and they should 
have high load bearing characteristics, good rigidity and weight should be light in case if the weight is more then uh, in case if it is heavy material then article weight will be more that you know, may not be used for the applications like automobile and other purposes. And when you go to the application side these engineering plastics are directly used as it is without metal it is simply used or in few places in conjugation with the metals these materials are used. Here some of the areas where we are using widely automobiles, defense, electrical, electronics and telecommunication and textiles and satellite, computer like that we are using this engineering plastics in variety of areas.